How are we doing? I don't know if she saw us. Did she see us? Oh, okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, minutes of the previous meeting. Any corrections or additions, please? Move to accept. Move to accept. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. For correspondence tonight, we have a letter from Mr. and Mrs. Moore regarding McMullen, a letter from Robert Danielson regarding McMullen, an email from John Mitchell, Rebothell, a memorandum from the Code Enforcement Officer regarding In by the Sea, a letter from the Code Enforcement Officer regarding 316 Ocean House Road. Uh, under old business, um, we have a request from um, Moskowitz McMullen Resource Protection Permit uh, asking to um, table the consideration of their application until they can meet with the Conservation Commission. Do I have a motion from the board to consider? So moved. Second. We have to read the motion, though, into the minutes. Oh, we do? Yes. Go ahead, Jack. Okay. Um, Diane Maskowitz and Scott McMullen are requesting a resource protection permit for 4,191 square feet of previously filled wetland and pond for landscaping located at 221 Pickett Street, section 19-8-3. Their recourse, resource protection completeness request is they have requested that their resource protection completeness be tabled until August 2007. At which time a public hearing will be held? Sir? Oh, okay, I was just reading off here. Be tabled to the regular August 21, 2007 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Okay. And then we have a request from Stephen and Patricia Bothell, Bothell uh, asking that we table consideration of their application. May I have a motion for the board to consider? I'll move. Madam Chairman, um, I have a motion for the board to consider that based on the request of the applicant that the application of Stephen and Patricia Bothell for a minor subdivision review of a five-lot subdivision located at 90 and 98 Ocean House Road uh, be tabled to the regular July 17, 2007 meeting of our planning board at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Second. All in favor? <coughs> okay. New business, uh, Cross Hill Lot 1 Amendment. Will uh, the applicant please come forward and Hello. introduce my us. My name is Richard Bryant, and I'm the attorney for Juan Perez, who's here tonight. He's the owner of Lot 1 in Cross Hill. And we're here tonight for uh, an amendment to the existing Cross Hill subdivision. Um, Excuse me, I just got something marine I need to look quickly at. Um, we're here to amend uh, the existing lot one in the Cross Hill subdivision. When that subdivision was originally approved, there was a restriction in the uh, declaration that applied to most of the lots that prohibited any further subdivision. But this lot and another lot owned by Mr. Perez were intentionally accepted from that provision. And in fact, uh, when the infrastructure for Cross Hill was created, the roadway, the utilities, and so forth, um, there, were, there was a curb cut and uh, utility stubs that were placed in anticipation of the future subdivision of his home lot, his household lot, which is what's happening here. Um, you have in front of you a plan, and I can point it out on the board here. You can all see that. Mm -hmm. um, the existing lot is actually a U-shaped lot that surrounds a lot owned by Susie Van Wy. It fronts on Wells Road, and Mr. Perez's home has its access off Wells Road. There's a great deal of frontage along Cross Hill Road, and the intent <coughs> is to carve out a, a lot 
that will have access off Cross Hill Road. And as I say, there's an existing curb cut and there are utility stubs coming from Cross Hill that will serve that lot. Because we're in the residential B district, we've got to comply with open space zoning requirements. Um, and we propose to do that by dedicating to the town um, roughly 34,000 square feet of space here, which includes uh, areas that now include a portion of RP2 wetlands, which uh, serves for drainage for the entire Cross Hill um, project. There are a couple existing easements within the, uh, the open space. There's a drainage <coughs> easement where a storm drain comes under Cross Hill. Uh, there is also a, a, a access way off Cross Hill so that Ms. Ben Y, who has a very tight lot, can get access to the back of her, uh, her house lot from Cross Hill Road. There's also an existing no-cut restriction on the area of the lot between Ms. Van Wy's property and Cross Hill Road. And all of those items were already in existence at the time of the creation of Cross Hill and are included on the existing Cross Hill plan. We're not changing any of that here. Um, I have submitted to the town a, uh, a draft uh, deed for the open space, which includes a number of restrictions uh, on, <coughs> on its uh, use. And I've just been handed by Maureen a letter from Mike Hill, who's commenting on it. I had haven't had a chance to look at that yet, but our intent was obviously to make sure that the draft of the deed uh, complied with whatever the town attorney felt was appropriate in terms of restrictions to the property. The idea is obviously that the wetland should remain undisturbed, um, that it should be uh, modeled uh, in terms of protection after the existing Cross Hill open space restrictions, uh, which include 95, 100 acres worth of open space with trails and public access and so forth, but that's prohibited from further development. And that's exactly what we used in, in putting together the draft of restrictions for this property. Um, we comply with all the existing zoning. We're above the, uh, above the minimum lot size, which is 10,000 square feet. Uh, the existing lot, which is roughly 83, 84,000 square feet, will be carved into two lots. Lot one, which will be the lot that still contains Mr. Perez's existing residence, will be 36,671 square feet. The new house lot that will be coming off, that will be uh, fronting on Cross Hill Road, will have 12,328 square feet and the open space being dedicated to the town is 34,927 square feet. And as I say, um, it's, a, it's a fairly straightforward uh, division of land. We aren't having to create any new infrastructure. Um, we do comply with all the zoning and the open space requirements. Uh, and this was anticipated as a prospective amendment when Cross Hill was originally approved by the Planning Board about 10, 10 years ago. Before we start with questions, I, I would just like to take a minute so everybody here and you can read the letter. Sure. And that way, if we have any questions, you'll at least know what the letter says. Thank so you. why don't we take about a minute and read the letter. board has had a, had a chance to read it. I've certainly had a chance to review it. Okay, uh, everybody else have a chance so that when we get to questions, if anybody has a question, we can ask those questions. All right, first we have to decide, even though we are um, 
don't have to formally find that the application is complete, but let me ask the board members if they feel the application is complete and want to proceed. We don't have to formally vote on finding the application complete, but we do as consensus have to decide that the application is complete. It doesn't have to be a formal motion. Does anybody have any questions about the completeness of the application? No. Okay, so everybody's in favor of finding it complete. Uh, the next thing we need to decide is whether or not we need a, a site walk and a public hearing. Maureen, have there been any calls or questions about the property, about the division? There have been, um, there's been a couple of calls. There hasn't been any direct opposition except a letter that I think you've received from a Mr. Healy who was concerned about stormwater running onto his property on the south side of Wales Road. And the town staff are treating that as a separate issue. We've been out there to look at his issues because the addition of just one lot isn't going to even trigger the, an amount of stormwater that's measurable. And uh, the town engineer is confident that existing stormwater systems in the subdivision can handle the small, tiny increase that will come out of a new lot. So that doesn't need to be part of our I, I don't think it does. consideration. Right, is there anyone here who feels that we need a site walk or a um, public hearing? Okay, so we're all in favor of proceeding with the application, which is fine. All right, um, open for questions. Any questions Peter, at all? Peter, maybe I guess I'm asking you why is the title. Uh, both of them mean nothing to me. Uh, <laughs> why don't you explain the difference? I'm looking at you. This, you have more experience with it than I. Well, I, haven't, I haven't seen the proposed deed, so. Um, it's, I'm, in, I'm it's in the packet. It's, it's mistitled. It's under. It's it says draft. In all fairness, it says draft. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> As I understand it, Mike's just re recommending a title change. Is that the way you read it? Exactly. Do you, you care? I don't care in the Subs least. The <laughs> substance of the deed is what controls what it, whether you label it deed or mortgage or whatever else. Um, That's exactly right. And I, like I say, I pulled this from the draft that was used for Cross Hill. And I think that was the draft that was on the for Cross the Hill. For the other before. open space. For the, for the large open space in Cross Hill done 10 years ago. And I think the, the restriction on chemical use of application of chemicals that Mike points out in the third paragraph of his letter was also taken verbatim from the existing Cross Hill restrictions. Don't have an objection to removing it if you'd like, um, if it makes uh, Michael more comfortable with the form. I, we don't have any objection to that. And, and we frequently, Maureen, make conditional approvals where that they work out the language with the town attorney. Right, because the town attorney's letter is very explicit in exactly right. what he would change. So well, all you're doing is today. I mean, I asking him. See a reason to hold it up. Right, you you could put a condition saying that the D be revised per the town attorney's letter dated on this date. Right, and I don't think Mr. Bryant's seen any major issues. No, no, none whatsoever. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't see that's as a reason to hold up. Is there any mortgage on it? That, so there needs to be a release of mortgage. Well, uh, yeah. Huh. No, there's no existing mortgage okay. on the property. All right, any other questions? Was there, oh. Mr. Bryant, was there a special reason they put in that sentence about the pesticides? Um, I'm thinking back to a decade ago, and I remember oh, but okay. fuzzy, but, I, but my understanding was the, that that draft went through a number of iterations, and I can't tell who came up with the concept of restricting the, the chemical uses. Yeah. Do you agree with the letter where it says it's pretty much unenforceable, that last sentence? Um, look at what he exactly he said. I'm not aware of any existing ordinance in Cape Elizabeth that deals with this, but that's not to say that five years from now or 10 years from now or several decades from now we're gonna have, we're, we won't have a much more tightly regulated use of 
of chemicals, in which case this would then have application. I don't know right now of anything that, that would apply to this language. I think they were just planning ahead. But again, it makes no difference to, to us if the town's preference and the town attorney's preference is not to have that, we're happy to take it out. Anybody else? Any other questions? Motion for the board to consider. Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Juan Perez Feebles for an amendment to the Cross Hill subdivision to divide lot one located at 53 Wells Road into two lots be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that a deed for the conservation land be submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney and signed by the applicant. And two, that the deed be modified based on the town attorney's letter dated June 19th, 2007. Second. All in favor? Thank you very much. We appreciate You're it. welcome. Thank you. Just for the board's information, the package in orange is dated material that is more of a reference. It's something you have to read tonight. Okay, um, we have another letter that we have to read before we continue, but then by the seed, do you want to come forward and introduce yourself, Mr. Tees, and give us an overview of the next plan or, and changes? There are several of us who were on the planning board before, but there are several people who weren't. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Scott <laughs> Tees, principal at TFH Architects in Portland. Uh, we were the original architects uh, for the building that uh, presently exists. I'm here this evening with Steve Bradstreet from Kelsey and Edwards. He's our <coughs> civil engineer. And we also have Mike Zimmerman uh, from the Olympi Olympia Companies, who is the project represent owner's representative. A brief description of the project. We are proposing to add 15 rooms to the existing building, uh, along with a spa, some meeting rooms. Uh, the uh, addition, which is uh, basically uh, in the present location of the Rose Garden uh, to the north of the existing building, uh, will contain five rooms, two meeting rooms, and a spa on the lower level, actually below grade. The, uh, and several administrative offices. We also are proposing to uh, increase the size of the port cashier, the covered um, roof over the parking area, and also raising it so that emergency vehicles can, be, um, can pass beneath. The existing building, there are also some modifications. We're proposing to take the two meeting rooms and convert them into guest rooms. So one way to think about it is 10 in the new wing and five in the existing. The square footage and the size of the meeting rooms essentially has not changed. There's actually one square 
foot. We did additional calculations this week, and we're within one square feet of the of the existing. Uh, but as I mentioned before, they are in the in the new wing. We're also proposing um, to uh, modify the entrance. You'll see there are now two curb cuts, if you will, as opposed to one with a center island. Um, we also uh, have increased the number of parking spaces by 11. Uh, we've done that by taking the area that's in the, uh, presently being used as a tennis court. They were, we felt underutilized. Parking, as you know, is a premium, so we've converted that to parking. We have also are proposing uh, an extensive landscaping program for the site. Uh, most notably is uh, the addition of trees uh, along uh, Boward Beach Road, along with extensive plantings around um, between the building and, and, and the road. Uh, there's um, also addition of a, of, of a removal of the existing building called a shed that's presently uh, used for recycling and waste. Um, it is a shed that was not part of the original design. It evolved out of need. We have now designed a building which is slightly larger. It also contains not only recycling, but also some mechanical equipment for the air conditioning um, of the new wing. Uh, because so much of this is site, what I'd like is for Steve to go through the specifics of the site development. I will also then talk about the specifics of the building, if you like. How, Madam Chairman, would you like to read the letter when we're finished with this, or would you like to interject it prior to that? You mean the, the letter, this letter? Y yes. Have you had a chance? Whoops. Have you had a chance to read it? I, I have briefly uh, received it at the end of the day, a few hours ago. Okay. Did everybody have a chance to read the letter? From Richard Lowe. Yes. Yeah. No. Mark. 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 Sensei. Oh, no. Did everybody have a chance to read it? No. Okay. I guess everybody has read it, so. Okay. Would you like us to then finish the yes. description Continue. and then we can yeah. get into the specific? Thank you. Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Steve Bradstreet with uh, Edwards and Kelsey. Uh, we provided the site engineering uh, design. Uh, the landscaping was provided by Barry Hosmer, a landscape architect. Um, and what I'd like to do is sort of go through, it's a lot easier to look at this uh, larger plan anyways, though I may refer back to the uh, actual full set of plans. The, uh, as Scott had indicated, um, the entrance is currently right here. Uh, we are now providing two entrances. Uh, this had been reviewed um, on the previous uh, approvals by the fire chief and accepted addressing his comments at that time. But it would be a one way in around through the uh, Port Cachere with a drop off and then uh, parking either in, a, in the facilities over here or on this side and then a one way exit. The general fountain that you see in the, in the uh, front will be maintained. A um, little upgrade to it, but it's still maintained so that will retain there. The book share does extend over there or will extend over uh, to there uh, to allow some uh, seating areas. The uh, tennis courts, there are existing tennis courts presently in this location. Those will be uh, eliminated. They have found that they are not utilized. Um, so those would be eliminated, providing us uh, additional parking uh, spaces uh, in this area uh, to address the additional uh, units that are being provided. And as had Scott mentioned, uh, the conference or the meeting rooms uh, have not changed in square foot size, uh, so therefore did not require additional parking spaces for any uh, expansions there. The, the in expansion, um, there's some things that did not get actually colored up on this, uh, which is out here there is a deck, uh, a small planter in this location, and then um, some steps in here. Those are actually highlighted on the larger site plan that I have up here. I did that just for clarity because when we got this back, we realized that there, uh, it didn't show all the areas that were uh, part of the expansion. The uh, facility is provided with uh, public water. It does have a, uh, a number of uh, septic fields in there. And 
Um, what we're providing that really stands out is the landscaping change. Anything in the front um, of the facility, along with right adjacent to the building, and then down the property line of the spray property, uh, will be uh, removed. Um, additional landscaping uh, will be provided. All of them uh, on the schedule are now. Uh, we've tried to uh, make it main native uh, plants. Um, some of the ones that were on original submissions were not, and we're trying to uh, make this a more native, greener facility. The street trees that we're providing out here, there's five on this side and two on here, are intended to uh, address a comment by staff in the street trees that are provided on the Sprague property. On the Sprague property, they are inside on the Sprague property, not within the right-of-way. Um, however, we have the issue with overhead power lines, and we're trying to avoid those. There's one existing tree here that would be uh, removed. Um, it has seen the typical croppings that happens or pruning uh, from CMP. So we are starting on the opposite side where the utility actually goes across the street, and we're able to pick up some street trees uh, within the right-of-way. Uh, those will be uh, higher uh, limbed trees, does not interfere with any sight distance in either direction. Uh, typical sight distance is based on 10 feet off of the edge of the travel lane, um, and you'd be able to have uh, sight distance uh, in either direction, uninterfered uh, by uh, any of the landscaping that is proposed. There were a um, an, a number of uh, items that uh, Marine put together in her memorandum, and I'd just like to briefly go down uh, on some of these just to show that they have been addressed. Um, they're not on the plans that have in front of you, but I, I just want to go through those. Um, the fire lane that the fire chief had requested be shown on the plans between the hotel and the cottage, or the inn and the cottage, is shown on the new plans that I brought with me tonight. Uh, we have shown that in there uh, to address the uh, fire chief's concern. The building setbacks are shown on all of the engineering uh, drawings. Um, today I did have a discussion with Steve Harding the town's consultant engineer in regards to the additional details, the construction details um, that would be uh, submitted on the final uh, approval set and not as he did not feel that were necessary as part of completeness. And then the stormwater waiver, uh, it is virtually the same um, as what we had requested prior to, had that discussion with him today and that verbally anyways was it acceptable to him. And I apologize in the submission that you do have on the stormwater and the parking. Those who happen to be the old submissions from 2005. I do have new ones with me for stormwater and parking if you'd like to see those. Uh, but both of those were discussed with um, Steve Harding this afternoon. The um, additional uh, item that I'd like to uh, discuss is the sanitary waste disposal. Uh, Maureen had that in her notes. Uh, I did uh, or have in the past run a calculation in regards to the cost of that and I believe we had indicated the cost in the workshop that we had uh, last month. I do have a letter um, in regards to that. Maureen has not seen it um, but I will uh, just to highlight what it involves is the pump station uh, with wet well and a standby generator is approximately $175,000. The uh, installation of the force main within the uh, force main uh, or within the water main, abandoned water main out in the uh, Bowery Beach Road uh, adds up to approximately $150,000. And then there was pavement restoration and the like that are required to, um, we will need to get in the road for a little bit to be able to push and pull the force main for another $16,000. So the total of that work is approximately $341,000. I just wanted to bring that to
to your attention because that was one of the comments that uh, Maureen had in uh, her memorandum to the, the, uh, the board. Um, again, as I had uh, noted my discussions with uh, Steve Harding, uh, we went over his comments in his June 13th memo and um, numbers two and three are, were in regards to the stormwater and the parking. Those are actually, I do have updated ones if you'd like to see those. Uh, he did not have an issue with it because I did describe it and discuss it with him over the phone. I do not believe that he's had the opportunity to, to talk or relay that information onto Marine. And also the traffic generation, a updated letter from Bill Bray. Um, at the time of the submittal, uh, it was our understanding that uh, what was uh, had been originally proposed was acceptable. We did not have that updated. Um, nothing has changed as far as the traffic is concerned, and that letter can be uh, obtained and, and submitted at a later date, but Steve Harding also did not feel that was um, a necessary uh, item for uh, completeness. Um, those are the major ones that were uh, issues that were in um, Marine's memo. Um, I tried to uh, address them briefly uh, so that I could answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Before we get into questions, shall we make a decision about completeness and then continue from there? Or do you want to ask some questions first regarding completeness? Talk about you want to make a motion then? Uh, not ready yet. No. This is just about completeness. So are they going to provide this additional information with their next submittal? We I believe the applicant said that everything that's been requested by the town engineer and myself, they're going to be providing when they revise the plans and submit them next month? That is correct. Yeah. Right now, all we have to do is make a decision about completeness, and then we have to decide whether we want a, a site walk, and we'll ask questions and well, give them any direction we want to for the next month. But this is only about completeness, right? Well, now. is it complete without, without that information, or is that, it? That really is information beyond the level of completeness. Those items don't have to be taken care of now for completeness. This, I mean, normally what the board will do is they expect a perfectly complete application, but in the real world, there's, I mean, what staff tries to do is identify information or issues as early in the process as possible. And so it is typical for the board to be presented with a bulky application. The staff is still identifying things that perhaps could be completeness items and also identifying a host of issues that aren't at the level, I think we had a board member who said, he made a distinction between complete and adequate. And I think what staff is saying is there are several things that we would like to see a little bit more expansively and it's up to the board to decide whether sufficient information has been provided to at least meet that level of complete enough to start the discussion. Part of, the, part of the reason we have the completeness rules to keep the application sort of together and not the other um, the other thing to note is that it's the applicant's risk I and mean, he's told us he's going to provide all this data mm -hmm. if he, we get something at the next public hearing and there's just no reason to hear, grant approval you know that's a completely valid reason to uh, <coughs> so um, Okay. At this stage, I, I don't have any, based on what I've seen so far, I have no reason to think that this applicant, especially given the history of this particular project, isn't going to come through with what they've you know, promised us. I don't see. I really can't hear you very I'm well. I'm sorry. I don't, see any, I don't see any reason to believe that what the applicant has told us he's going to provide you know, before the next public hearing, he's not going to come through with. The other thing I was saying, Jim, is you know, it's the applicant's risk that if he doesn't come up with what Right. You know, he said he was, based on these comments, if we don't have enough information to grant approval, our, you know, the ultimate remedy is yes. we don't grant the approval. So um, generally, we, when we see good faith and they're trying as hard as they can to get this data to us, I don't see any reason to hold up approval. I don't have a problem with uh, 
making a motion to. I'd like to ask a question, Mario. Sure. Uh, Mario, how does this letter from Geologic Incorporated play into the question? That's really up to the board to decide. Um, I, my guess is that that letter is more a question of meeting standards of approval rather than a threshold of completeness of information. Because the applicant has provided information on the septic system that's proposed to serve the project. So that's what they're required to provide. That issue with that letter has been raised because there are prior approvals on the site which include conditions placed on it by the planning board. And it seems that the board may want to deal with whether or not those particular conditions are being applied to the current approval. Well, the letter basically says that what has been included is not adequate, not providing sufficient and reliable information. Which would be information based, which is required as part of the prior condition of approval. So I think you could easily call that a substantive issue of review rather than a level of completeness issue. Because completeness really is going through site plan checklist and making sure that a minimum amount of information has been submitted under each item. For example, you could make the determination that they have provided you information for subsurface disposal. So they, there's a difference between whether or not anything has been provided and whether what was provided was adequate. Okay, you may go back and say, Yes, you provided X, but now I need to see these other things because it's okay. not adequate. Well, let, me get, let me get your comment on this letter then before we go any further. Ms. Raz, do you intend to respond to this letter? With yes, I, um, I won't respond directly. It will be uh, through a subconsultant, but uh, we will respond uh, to this letter um, and have something submitted in the next submittal. Okay. Um, this seems less intrusive than what you're doing already. The, yes. What he's recommending, so I don't see why he wouldn't run with it. Because right now he's just uh, he's recommending to stop the uh, the sampling and but analyze it, the system as it's functioning. Well, in a different way. In a different way. Yeah, with with a better result though. Technology changes. Sure, I'm pretty familiar with it. <laughs> okay. I have one other one other question about the sign location and dimension. Is that included on this new set of plans that you have? It was noted on it, a checklist it is. that it, it has been addressed. It's not labeled. Um, it's on the landscaping plan. It's that rectangular line there. It is not. It has never been labeled. Uh, I apologize for that. It will be labeled. Um, that is the location for it. There is not a design of the sign in your package. I might add that the reason that we don't have a design, there is a, a marketing consultant, so the actual logo may evolve and change, so we can't share it, but in spirit, certainly it'll be very similar to what is there. Um, it would be an externally illuminated you know, from the ground, probably just like we have framed by the sea presently. Are the dimensions on there as well, or just the location? That's just the location. It's just the location. Are there other questions related to completeness at this point? Or do you want to finish asking questions and then vote on completeness? Okay. Other questions? I have one quick question. What are the site distances now with the trees? I mean, once you re-landscape. Uh, once, once you re-landscape, I mean, if you're looking um, I, I, I don't. We, they haven't been measured, but I know from being out there many times that uh, to the left is over a thousand feet uh, easily. To the right, uh, that gets into a slight bend in here, um, but I'm sure it's probably over 600 feet. Uh, this is a 35 mile an hour speed zone. Uh, typical requirements are 30, 350, rule of thumb, 350 feet. There's not an issue there. And the trees that would be planted out here would have the, the higher pruning. Uh, you require, what you're doing is you're sitting in a vehicle, your eyes are three and a half feet off the ground. That's what the design is based on. So that's considerably lower than what you might be thinking about when you're standing up. So your eyes are at that level. Uh, so you prune it up six feet high, 
It would probably be higher than that only because of it's in the public right of way with plowing and the like and snow banks and things like that. They'll end up being even higher. Thank you. Other questions before we have a motion? I guess this one is discussion, item number three here. Uh, function capacity. Um, do you have any plans right now for off site parking arrangements or outside functions? Presently, there's an agreement uh, with uh, St. Bartholomew Church. Uh, it runs through October. Um, there are discussions that are uh, in process, and the plan is to renew that and formally submit that to the town. Would, would that, um, you know, is there sufficient parking there to satisfy St. Bartholomew's needs on sad evening services as well as the parking needs that you would have on Saturday evenings, for instance? They don't have Saturday evening services anymore. Yeah. They don't? No. Okay. And there, there's a uh, previous, uh, probably three or four, almost three years ago, there was extensive analysis of the whole parking situation. That was the resolution in terms of numbers of vehicles. It should not exceed that study, which will be updated and, and represented, along with the additional parking spaces that we have on site. Okay. Will that be part of your final submission here? I'm sorry? Will that be part of your final submission here? Um, it certainly can be. That's our plan, yes. Yeah, I think it should be. It will be. Jack, I know from personal experience, I've never heard of any trouble. I mean, I'm a member of St. Bart's. Okay. I've never seen any issues. And okay. the priests being fewer, that's why they canceled the yeah, that's Saturday. What I, that's right. I figured when you said Mass. So. Other questions, or can we entertain a... <clears throat> Motion for completeness. Um, I move that based on the plans and, and materials submitted and the fact presented the application of in by the CLLC to add 15 guest rooms, parking, a utility shed, landscaping, and miscellaneous renovations to in by the sea, located at 40 Bowery Beach Road, be deemed complete. Second. Second. All in favor? Anybody opposed? <coughs> Okay, now we have to decide um, whether or not we want a public hearing and a site walk. Um, personally, I think we clearly need a public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, the site walk, I have mixed feelings about, mostly because we did this, quite a few of us did this. But not everybody, most of us have not done it before, actually. I think that... I was not there. No? No. Uh, so I think that perhaps we need to and have I another say, I don't mind. site walk. I, I don't, do you all agree? I mean, I feel yes. since five people weren't here. Well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm just okay. saying. Okay. So we need to schedule a site walk, and I guess we all have to take out our calendars and schedule a site walk. I'm not going to be around for a while, but that's okay. I had the site walk before. Time for site walk? What's good for you? Well, I, I think this time of year we have the advantage of being able to do it maybe after work instead of uh, on a weekend day. That's right. <laughs> Let's take advantage of that. That would, I agree. Right. That would be preferred. <laughs> Is may, there a particular may, time? Maybe sooner before people? vacations kick in <laughs> rather than later would be a good idea. Is there a time just start with the board. And, uh, okay. Probably what is good for you? I am probably not going to be here, but as I say, I've had the site walk already. So that well, we were supposed to have a joint planning board this Thursday. So since we had that time blocked off <laughs> on, every, on everybody's it. schedule. Thursday, yeah. I can do it this Thursday. Oh, you can do it. Well, I, I, I had a previous schedule. Might be, but... oh, oh, oh. oh, that's right. There were a couple of people that couldn't make it anyway. <clears throat> Any other, other times, ideas? or that time, or whatever time? Yeah, I, can't I, I can't do it tomorrow. Next, next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. Time, uh, 26th? Till Thursday. There are a lot of people who won't be available that night. I'm out of town until If you want to do it Thursday, Thursday, I'll just go back and do it some other time. Thursday. Thursday. Well, Thursday. And I'm really trying to accommodate the folks who didn't get out there, so. This Thursday? This Thursday. Oh, or the 28th. Thursday. 28th. I can, I can do the 28th. No. No? no. Okay. I can do it. I can do it this Thursday or next Thursday. How many people can go on the 28th, which is next Thursday? That's, you can't. That's four. How about the 21st? 
this Thursday? This Thursday. Well, it's possible. I, I think I'm going to be at another planning board meeting, so. Uh, the 28th or the 21st? Yeah, 28th, next Thursday. Where's that meeting? In uh, West Bath. So if it's at 5 o'clock. You could do it. Well, I don't do you want to crunch it that closely. Well. What about this Thursday? No. No, you can't. I'd, I'd go for next Thursday. If I can make it, I'll. And with me. Ready at 5. 28 to 5. So I, will take her yes. I, will, I will not be here, but I've been there before. Works for me. Jim? Oh, you can't make it either. I'm gone for the next week. You're three gone weeks. for a couple weeks, right? Three weeks. Whole work. No, not vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so, 28th, we're talking four of us, maybe five. Maureen, can you make it? Yes. You need to? Yep. 28th. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you go ahead to 28th, and then if Jim can't go, he can perhaps go over and just look at the site himself oh. with the plan. He, he lives pretty Maureen. close. We do 5 p.m.? 5 p.m. on the 28th. Is that good for you? I believe it is. Now. Is, that all right? is that on site at 5 o'clock? Yes. yes. Okay. Down Would you send an email out, Maureen? Yes, I will. Need the reminder. Okay. Are there any other questions now before we vote the second part of the motion? Any other questions for the applicant? Any other direction you want to give them? Or oh. um, Steve, just a couple of things, and maybe yes. these, were, these were picked up with, um, with Steve Harding's details. Uh, the second access way, um, I didn't see a detail for the, uh, the cross-section, what the, what the composition was. It Correct. Just, um, if, 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 if it's something other than the standard detail, I just would want to see what that is. Okay. And the, uh, I did not note a, um, a clearance for the Porta Cochere. I, I just didn't see it on any of the drawings, just to, just to confirm that it is there somewhere. There is a detail that's been floating around. I have seen it. It's 10 feet, 6 inches, if I recall right, Scott, okay. um, which is more than what the fire chief had requested. Okay. We will make sure that that gets submitted within the uh, next medal. Excellent. Thank you. Other questions? Maureen, if, if they want to be um, in front of the planning board again on the 17th of July, is that the next? Mm -hmm. When do you need to have the application? June 29th. So I guess that's a question for the applicant whether or not. June 29th is the submittal for the July 17th date. Mm -hmm. um, it's next yes. week. It's we, next we need next to. Friday. You need to. <laughs> we have to. Okay. I have one question. <clears throat> Are there going to have to be changes in the septic system itself to update the septic or make it m bigger in order to accommodate more rooms? Or is the septic system, do you plan to leave it exactly as it is now? It, it stays, uh, the septic system stays exactly as it is now. Uh, based on the letters from Al Frick uh, at the last uh, go round, uh, indicated that there is sufficient capacity for the additional rooms. Uh, the functions don't uh, change. So that would be, uh, we would get that letter again uh, for, to make sure that we have that in the package. The only thing that does uh, change is there are some sanitary sewer pipes that are out in this general area of the inn. We have to just relocate them out, but that is not part of the septic field. So the septic field does not change. So there are essentially no costs, n n very negligible costs associated with the, with the septic system. Yes, the, actually there should be no cost with the septic system. It's just the drain lines, the sewer lines that are going to it. So, and those are minimal costs. And there was also some question about whether or not the shed, the, the new mechanical room, was one edge of it was sitting on part of the septic field. Or that is actually a, uh, a design, um, this is actually not part of the shed. It is a screening fence for a condenser unit. And that does, that fence has a spread footing that is located on top of the concrete chambers. That has been uh, reviewed by Alfred two years ago when we first submitted it, and that was acceptable. That will be, uh, again, provided with his acceptance of what we're doing there. So we're not actually impacting it. 
And when you come in with your, um, the next time, could I ask that you perhaps bring a sample of the concrete that you're planning on using, unless you have it already? Great. Thank you. I think we referred, if everybody's aware of what um, has been discussed, um, rather than using wood siding, the plan is using a cement fiber, wood fiber and cement together. It's a a more stable uh, material. Uh, it'll hold paint. It'll certainly read as paint from the exterior. Um, it's uh, more durable, more environmentally friendly. We're trying to be as green with everything from mechanical systems materials as we can. So we've recommended this and this is what we'd like to use as opposed to um, wood. And this is for trim now. And it will remain shingles. They'll be real cedar shingles. Are there any other questions? We have a second part of the motion to consider, but anything else, any direction for the applicant, anything else you want them to provide? The, the inn's gonna be closed, right, while this work? Yes, the inn will be closed, I believe, from October 19th to middle of May 2000. October 7th. 7th? Yeah. Until spring. Uh, the winter season, let's say, so it will be closed. All the construction will be this winter. That is correct. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. The restaurant closed too. The restaurant closed. Everything, yes. Okay. Yes, Paul. Um, Thursday. To be ordered that the above application be tabled to the regular July 17, 2007 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second? Second. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank uh, Scott, you. is there anything else you wanted to say before you left? or? I will save it for the final meeting. Thank okay, you thank you so much. <laughs> right, I believe that ends our formal meeting. <coughs> Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn to a workshop? So moved. Second. Oh, you've already seconded. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you.